All right, I'm Dane Young with Jim Donnan here on UGASports.com. And uh, Coach, typically you're being interviewed by our guest today, but the tables are turned. Yeah, I mean, for 20-some years I've had a chance to be interviewed by Paul and uh, very fortunate to be involved with him as a friend and as a compatriot trying to analyze football and everything else. But uh, we go back a long ways and appreciate Paul being with us today. Coach, it's my pleasure. I, uh, you've been one of my favorite people of all time. And but of course, I don't have any other friends. But other than that, I'm really, uh, <laughs> I am really looking forward to this because I have leaned on you uh, more times than I'll admit publicly. Yeah, we had a show back when you were doing the radio. And then when you went, went on uh, the SEC network, I've been on a few times. But, hey, you know, the thing about our fans is they get a chance to watch your show every day. And you, you certainly have so many great guests and everything, but I'm going to have a chance here today to maybe ask you a few things about what you, your feelings are about what's going on sure. with college football. And uh, won't ask you anything about politics because I know you got a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right off the bat, uh, what's your take on the transfer portal? Coach, I think that is issue number one uh, facing – college football right now and in particular the SEC uh, you've got as good a sources as I do and uh, I bet uh, it's going to be a while before the SEC comes up with a decision because I, I'm I, I you may know the votes but I think it's pretty split right now among uh, the old guard who is not about to uh, let that go and let players in the SEC transfer without sitting out and then there's there's a new crowd so I, I it's a big deal though uh, it may not be getting as much as, as much attention as the uh, the CFP, but I think it's probably a much bigger uh, internal issue. Yeah, there's no question about that because, uh, you know, the really good teams, the kids aren't going to leave if they're first or second team, but, the, you know, the lesser teams, you're going to see a lot of that and they try to build their programs up and you just really don't know. But uh, how about the, the playoffs right now as they stand? Uh, you know, four-team playoff, I know every coach you have on there has got an opinion you have a chance to talk to Bill Hancock from the college football playoff. Where do you think we're trending on that? I think we're, we're getting close. Um, and, and right now here, you know, everything is, does, does not revolve around the SEC, but in this case, I think it does because, you know, Greg Sankey is, is very influential. And I think what, what he does with the new commissioner at the ACC, uh, Jim Phillips, I think will, will tip the balance uh, because the ACC and the SEC are not are not are not in, in need of, a, of more teams coach uh, right now they're in pretty good shape as, as evidence last year and pretty much every year but but I think we're I, it's, I think it's as much of a college football playoff issue as it is a television issue and you know where I work and where you have worked uh, ESPN they hold the cards right now do they want to you know take this down to the end and, and let an open bidding process probably not this is a company that just spent a lot of money on the NFL the NHL and I suspect uh, in order to, to, to be the only bidder, uh, they'll open the window here in, a, in, a, in, in short order, and we'll see, a, we'll see an expansion uh, perhaps by in two years. All across sports, we're seeing just a lot of, I, I guess, creativity, but an abandonment of some tradition in the search of eyeballs. You're seeing it with the NBA, with the play-in tournament for teams. Do you see college football ever getting a bit – kind of strange and weird considering the heritage of the sport in terms of playoffs of, of doing something a little bit different? Well, I, I think, if, you know, when you heard the story last week, Dan, about, about the 12, that's the only way it would work is, it's, is to have an, have, a, have an opening round. I think right now uh, it's possible because the, the current system, even though it's probably uh, identified the best team every year, it's not only about that. What, what makes the NFL so great? Uh, you know, it's it's who's going to get in the playoffs final two or three weeks of the season? Is it home field? There's always a story. And let's be honest, in college football, there's really not. You know, Alabama's going to be in. You know, Georgia's either going to be in or not. Clemson's in. Ohio State's probably in. And then it's Oklahoma or somebody else. And and you just have to create – you you have to open – I mean, I don't want to go into everything has to be inclusive because that's, a, that's on the, on the, in the realm of politics. But – I think you, you have to, in today's world, let more people under the tent. And right now, it, it's, it's a pretty elite group. That's why I'm pushing for uh, promotion and relegation, like in soccer. Let's get the Sun Belt teams up if they're champions. And, you know, if you're bad in the SEC, there should be consequences. 
Well, that don't ever work. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be party to any conversation where somebody says that we, you know the SEC is bad. You and I both know that's not. Gonna <laughs> hey, let's talk about the SEC and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Nick Saban and his uh, lieutenants that are in the league now, yeah. and in particular, uh, two guys that seem to have it going maybe a little bit better than anybody else as far as challenging. What's your take on Jimbo Fisher, and then? Uh, We'll talk about Kirby in a second after you answer that. What, how, how do you feel, Jimbo? What's the imprint he's made, and what's the future there for the A and M Aggies? I think it's really good. And 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 Coach, I I know a lot of people think this team is going to be the same as last year. I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. They they do have Alabama at home, and that's a tremendous advantage. But you know they did lose a lot, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I say that with caution because I, I do think Jimbo is, is, is at that next level after Saban. I think he's that good. And it, it has been, yeah. I, I, when you win a title, you've been on national championship teams, you've coached national championship teams. It puts you in a different conversation than everyone else. It, it's that one thing you don't have to get over. It's like winning a major in golf. And I think that gives him an advantage, but I also think his recruiting is phenomenal. He's also got uh, an, uh, an athletic department where there, there simply is no budget. So when, when you can spend as much as they, they spend, and, you know, as, as A&M will spend and will continue to spend, then it's going to, it's going to be a tremendous advantage. Yeah, and I think I agree with you, too, about A&M maybe dropping off a little bit. It, it's hard to have a quarterback that started for four years and played as much as right. mind. And, and we know the way that, that Jimbo really relies on the quarterback at the line of scrimmage and all the stuff they do. So I think – uh, that's going to be the real key for them is how quick can their quarterback surface. And, and then, of course, our fans here, uh, you know, are, are all about the Bulldogs and, and Kirby Smart. And you've known him uh, when he was over there at Alabama, and you've seen how, how quick a change he's put into the program. But just from a perspective of, of uh, the SEC outside our own people, what do you think the take is on Kirby? And uh, what do you think the future is for the Dogs? Well, yeah, I don't listen to the the outliers that much, Coach. Uh, I think Kirby Smart is the second best coach in the SEC, and yeah, you know, I, I will be pretty shocked if uh, we don't see a national championship in a couple of years. You know, whether it's this year or next. I mean, that's it's like going to the stock market and picking the right stock. You don't know. There's always a lot of things that can happen. But yeah, you know, he has built such a such an enormously successful program, and he's done it the way you have to do it through recruiting. And he has a lot of advantages. And I think he's taken advantage of that. And, and not to get too deep into the future here, but I think if you look at the, the name, image, and likeness, you know, who will benefit the most? I think Kirby Smart's program will probably be at the top of that list because they have a lot of natural uh, advantages. And Atlanta is, is, to me, the most important. Uh, you, you can you – know, you, you land – at Hartsfield and you're in, you're in, you're on the campus in an hour and 15 minutes. That matters. Uh, as opposed to, you know, some of these places that you and I have tried to get to from, from nowhere. And, and it's such, you know, you know Georgia is a, you know, such an important state. The alumni base is, is, you know, unmatched. And on top of it all, and I say this with great jealousy, uh, cause I don't ever like to answer like, what's your favorite campus? What's your favorite college town? Athens, Georgia is the best college town in America. I mean, it's not, that's not, that's not open for debate. And, and I love where uh, people in, in Vanderbilt, I, I, I interviewed Clark Lee a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, we have the advantage of Nashville. Uh, hey, uh, Nashville is a great city, but you don't think about Vanderbilt when, when you uh, head down to Broadway. But, you know, I, I'll never forget two years ago, coach, uh, I was down there for twice in the same season. And, you know, I, I don't normally like to go out, but, you know, some friends convinced me we went down to, uh, you know, down to downtown Atlanta and walking around at 11 o'clock at night, I, I was in utter amazement at, at, uh, at what I saw, friendly kids. Uh, and every time, uh, every time I would talk to, and I stood there for 20, 30 minutes talking to uh, co-eds and, 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 you know, uh, you know, and, and guys and, uh, and ladies that went to UGA. And I mean, it was like, I, I mean, I don't want to sound the wrong way, but it's like they're, they're part of a cult. They, I, I have never run into a group of young people that love going to a university more that matters when it comes to recruiting. 
Paul, with the name, image, and likeness stuff coming to light, how's that going to impact the, I mean, we know it's going to topple recruiting a little bit, but just in terms of program building, how much more, I guess, does that put on a coaching staff at that point? No, I, I think the smart ones already have this figured out. I mean, it's like the pandemic last year. Uh, man, I was really surprised to find out that Nick Saban won the national championship because on March 12th, when everybody was sent home and I interviewed all these guys, Kirby Smart's home watching Netflix with his kids and this Jeremy Pruitt's home with his kids. Guess where Nick Saban was? He never left his office. Uh, I mean, it didn't matter whether there were state laws or city ordinances. He stayed there. He coached. He gained an advantage and he won. Um, and good for him. Uh, you know, put him in jail because he uh, he did what he wanted to do. And yeah, you know, at, at UGA, uh, I, I'm willing to bet that Kirby Smart's got a really intelligent plan. I've heard about it already, and they'll they'll, they'll win. Uh, they'll, they'll take advantage of it. There, I mean, there are some schools that can't take advantage of anything, but that's not going to be the case at UGA. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really a good situation for UGA, like you mentioned, Atlanta, just such a natural hub, you know, for the whole South, but uh, certainly so many places for Georgia to reach into. You know, another name that comes up in, in the league, and the guy's been here as a coach at you know, Mississippi State, and now uh, the Gators, and uh, really turned it around pretty quick, but uh, then fell apart at the end of the year. What do you think about Dan Mullen and, and where the the Gator program is uh, going at this point. Coach, I, I was really shocked by Dan Mullen last year. Um, you know, it was kind of the best of times, the worst of times, not to quote literature here, but um, I, 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 I'm not sure where that program is. And, and I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's not going to win. It, I mean, it's the University of Florida. I mean, you've got to really work hard to screw that place up. Uh, and, and quite frankly, we've seen a couple of coaches who worked very hard and they did screw it up. Um, but you know, Mullen, I don't think recruits well enough. Uh, I, I, and I, I'll leave it to you to explain why he, he has not been able to, to be on that same level as Kirby and, and Nick Saban or even Jimbo Fisher. I mean, he may be in the top 10, but there's a difference between one and 10. It's, it's a difference between winning a national championship and losing two or three games. And I, th I thought he just stepped in it so many times last year. And, and you know, w why is that? Uh, I think Dan sometimes just talks and, uh, you know, lets his mouth uh, overload everything else. And, 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 and that, that happened. And I thought the way the season ended was, quite frankly, embarrassing. Um, do I think they'll be back? Yeah, they'll be back. But, you know, what's, you know Gators, Gator fans aren't really happy getting to Atlanta. I mean, Jim McElwain went there twice and he was uh, – a clown of a coach. So, uh, you know, they're used to winning, you know, Spurrier won, Urban won, Dan Mullen, we still don't know yet. Yeah. I think that, that he had that pretty well set up and from the standpoint, they had it rolling last year and then, uh, you know, folded, you know, any way you look at, it, if you lose your last three games at a major program, it really puts you behind the eight ball as far as everything, as far as building and, and the future. But let's also talk about, uh, some teams outside our periphery here, just for a second, uh, the, the three teams that everybody talks about, Oklahoma, not in any order, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and Clemson. Where do you see these three teams going as far as the national uh, projection, and, uh, and, and what do you think of their coaches? Uh, I, think, I think Oklahoma has a real shot this year because of Rattler, and, and I, think, I think Lincoln has you know, really been a phenomenal coach. And I may say this a couple of times in, as we move along, I am really impressed with Ryan Day, uh, and how can you not be? Uh, you know, after Alabama, there's no better recruiting uh, magnet than, than Ohio State, and I would expect them to continue to challenge. I think the, the question I have, it may sound a little strange, is, you know, is this Clemson program built forever? I mean, will something happen? Uh, what, could, what could cause Clemson to quit getting to the playoffs every year? And it, it would be a uh, – what, 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 what has to happen is a threat from within. Now, is it going to be North Carolina? I don't think so. They're good. They're really good. But I don't think North Carolina is ever going to knock Clemson off. And the question is, can Florida State? Uh, and that's a mystery. If Florida State can get better, you and I both know, Coach, how dangerous that recruiting base is down there. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Somebody's got to start challenging them during the regular season. They've had some upsets, you know, where they lost – 
uh, you know, inexplicably to Pittsburgh or something like right. that. But, you know, you just got to feel like that, that it's just a 10, 11, 12 game win season every year for that team. And the same thing for Ohio State. You know, last year, you know, we, we look at his pro drafts and the teams that uh, like, like Oklahoma played against 12 guys last year that got drafted. Now, come on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and Ohio State, very similar, but. But I, I agree with you on those two guys, and I, I want to make sure that, that we get that point across. But, you know, another thing that is kind of a, a, a history in, in, in your uh, background is, you, you know, all the coverage that you've had over the years with Coach Bryant and, and going all the way through all these coaches. But uh, so what exactly is your relationship with Coach Saban at this point? It, it's it's good, but I don't see him much anymore, uh, Coach Don. And uh, when I was in Alabama, I saw him a lot. We talked a lot, um, but yeah, we 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 communicate occasionally. Uh, I think it's a good relationship. Uh, I've not been afraid to challenge him in the past. I mean, we had that infamous showdown at Media Days what five years ago, and uh, I think he was really caught off guard, and I got uh, widely blasted for it. But I, I really felt very strongly that he was uh, he was covering up uh, a situation and. And I let him know it, and uh, you know we we you know we got through it. Uh, and I will criticize him again, but right now there's almost nothing to criticize. Uh, he's he's uh, he's above every. Uh, I mean, he, he's at the he's at the top. I I, I, warn, I wonder because I, I do this. I've done this now almost forty years. You know, where 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 is the exit? Uh, I covered Coach Bryant's last two years. I saw it ended rather sadly and badly. I've, I've seen it with countless other coaches, as you have. doesn't matter. Just just throw a dart. You'll find the coach. And, and I just don't think Nick Saban uh, is, is prepared for what happens next. And, and I don't see it changing, but, 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 Coach, it always does. Something happens. Is it a little thing? Is it a big thing? More than likely – uh, he will leave Alabama over over a little bitty thing that somebody will slight him. So, you know, he'll lose a game or two, and he'll find out it's just not much fun winning. It's not just much, it's not much fun coaching when you when you lose a game or two every year. <laughs> and your show will be entertaining that day, whenever that is. Well, I will say this: I, I never, uh, you know, in spite of my uh, the accusations that I'm a sycophant for Saban. Uh, probably some of the most memorable shows we've ever had were after Alabama losses. And I don't root for that, but you take what you get. Um, but, you know, Saban, uh, you know, the Saban, I, I can, I can recite you every loss Saban's had at Alabama because they're so few and so memorable. Well, having lived yeah, in Opelika for four, those. having lived in Opelika for four years, I know that your name is a bit of a cursed one around there at times uh, for some of those fans. Other times, not so much. Sure. Uh, I'm curious what you think of Brian Harson because that was a bit of a definitely outside the South hire. I like it. Um, you know, Malzahn was Malzahn was just a bad marriage. I mean, you have a good you have a good you know you have a good year, a bad year, an indifferent year. Uh, should we break up? Should we? And by the way, I've never been divorced, so I'm uh, I'm talking uh, just from reading novels and watching sitcoms. Um, but I, yeah, Harson to me just seems like he's not really affected by you know all the all the outside noise, and it looks like he actually cares too. And, and for I think I think Malazan, you know, beat Saban a couple of times, and it didn't look like anything really phased him other than collecting that rather large paycheck. Yeah, he certainly did that. Uh, you know, uh, he, did beat, he did beat Nick three times and Freeze beat him twice, but everybody else is having a hard time with it. But uh, a couple other new coaches in the league that uh, we, we might mention, uh, Beamer and uh, Clark Lee. Uh, what's your take on those two? I like Clark Lee. Um, I think this program will improve. I mean, if the, uh, Coach, let me ask you, you're, you're, you're a mathematician. If they double their wins from last year, how many wins will they have? Yeah, that's good. I mean, they could get two more. <laughs> I think the guy's got a so, good background, that's for sure. You know, he's been around it, but it's such a difficult job when you look yeah. at all the, all the guys that have been in there and worked at it. But uh, same thing with, uh, you know, I thought Muschamp was a good hire there, but for some reason, he just could, 
he caught Clemson and, and Georgia when they were at their zenith. But uh, this is going to be a tough, tough road for Shane Beamer. I, I, I don't think Shane Beamer has any, uh, enough players. Uh, uh, I, I ran into a friend of mine recently. Uh, he, he's a Gamecock, and he was in practice a couple weeks ago. I won't mention his name um, because it, it would be recognizable. And I said, well, what would you see? He said, I didn't see any players. <laughs> I mean, coach, when you don't have any players, how do you win? Yeah, particularly when the guy might have been a – if a, if a reporter can see that for sure, and I think a lot of these reporters can definitely pick them out. I don't want to pull any punches there, but the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, is from a perspective here on Georgia, uh, looking at their uh, quarterback situation, and you've seen this over the years to have a chance, you know, look at Mac Jones, who would have thought three years ago when he was holding extra points that he was going to put, take them to a national championship. And, and now we got uh, JT Daniels here. Uh, what's the perception of, of Georgia's offense now that he's the quarterback and, and how does it look around the, as far as the, the people that you know? How do they feel about Georgia for next year? I think for, for most people, they think it's going to be a spectacular year and it comes down to really one game. And it's not the Clemson game. I, I think the Clemson game is a free game. Uh, you win, and the next thing you know, the expectations are through the roof. You lose, and, and you know what's ahead of you. Um, I think it's about the uh, it's about the SEC championship game, and I say that because I I'm not automatically putting Alabama in that game. Uh, you know, A and M could win, uh, LSU could win, um, but I, I think it's about to, it's about winning in Atlanta, regardless, and probably you know Alabama being the more difficult. And because without that, I I, I think Georgia the the off season is the same as. All, mo most every other offseason, but but I I, feel, I would put Georgia in the playoff right now, and I think uh, the Pickens injury bothered me as it bothered everyone listening and watching right now. That was that was a big blow, but uh, I, I think it, you know you, you know you can you can deal with it when it happens early, and I, I just would urge Georgia fans not to make the Clemson game a referendum on Kirby Smart. It's not. It's it's a big game. It's essentially a road game because of where it's being played. I live in Charlotte. It's not, I, and I've driven to both Athens and and Clemson. You get to Clemson a lot faster. Yeah, one thing about it that everybody needs to remember: the last game Clemson played, they had six touchdown passes thrown against them, and they yeah. lose they lose some of those players. Uh, I mean, Clemson's a good program, and uh, I got a lot of respect for Dabo and Venables and all that. But you know, hey, that, it's going to be a, a matchup of two teams trying to get some identity for the season, but the whole year is ahead of both teams. And uh, the other thing that, uh, and now let's let Dane ask you again, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin has made a big move here in the league. You know, he's a very outgoing guy. He's on Twitter. He does everything else. But in your opinion, last year, was Ole Miss any better than they were the year before uh, offensively and defensively? I mean, about the same record. I mean, was there anything yeah. – Anything to make you think that they're going to be that much better? No. I mean, you got to remember, uh, the media creates a narrative, Coach. You know it. You've been part of it. I mean, we've, we've you know, before we became friends, we, we, were, we were adversaries of sorts. And uh, you, you know, you know how, how we can do it. You, you, you're not part of it. And uh, the media loves Kiffin. They don't look at it objectively. They just, oh, Lane Kiffin, you know, love Lane. Look at that tweet. Um, you know, he hired a really good defensive coordinator, but I didn't, the defense didn't look any better uh, after one year. Will it get better? It better get better this year, or he's going to be hovering at that six, seven win mark. Uh, because in the SEC, uh, while I realize the, the 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 paradigm has shifted to offensive explosions, uh, you you can't you can't win if you don't have a a, a, a serviceable defense. You'll just get run over. Yeah, I mean that, that's. A they scored a lot of points on Bama, but uh, that's the thing that, that uh, bothers me is that I don't really see a, a dramatic improvement like the, I mean, you know, they went to a bowl and had a good win and, and he's a good coach. I mean, no question about it. Yeah, he's a very good coach. I, I think they left him some pretty good players, particularly on offense and uh, go ahead, Dane, and then I'll finish it up. Yeah, Paul, I just want to know your friendship and history with uh, coach John and how did that kind of come to be? Oh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, like, like, yeah. I mean, I, I, was, I used to be a lot more negative than I am now. I, I, I finally have seen the light, and uh, yeah. And I remember one time I had Coach on the on the, our radio show, and I, first of all, I couldn't believe he came on. Uh, and you know, he kind of gave it just like he took it, and and I respected that. 
Um, and not long after he uh, he left the University of Georgia, we were thrown together at a, at a charity event. Uh, I think this was the first time, Coach. We were down in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Right. Mike Godfrey was having an event. And, and I don't gamble, but I'm, I'm, I'm up for a good time. And we, we decided to drive over, I think, after the event uh, at about 1130 in the morning, uh, at evening, I should say, uh, to Biloxi, Mississippi. And I sat next to Coach Don in, in the back of uh, Mike Godfrey's car. And I will tell you, Dane, I've been to Vegas shows. I've, I've seen Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock. I've seen Jerry Seinfeld. I've never laughed this hard in my life. The guy is, is one of the funniest people. And, and I just, uh, you know, I said, this guy, I got I to gotta stay in touch with him. And we became really close friends, uh, you know, not just about football, but about, you know, things in our lives. He's helped me immensely uh, through some difficult decisions about uh, what I was going to do next. And, and, you know, you know, the, the stuff we do on the air is, is, is a small part of it, but, uh, you know, being in coach Donnan's house a couple of times when I've been over to Athens, just being friendly with him, uh, you know, seeing what, what he's had to overcome, uh, in, in, in various situations, I, 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 I consider him an extremely close friend. He's like, he's like family to me and, uh, uh, that will never change. Hey, I appreciate that, Paul. And I feel the same way, but. I would like for you to just end up today about the time that uh, when Georgia played Alabama and you were coming <laughs> over here to cover and I said, I need you to come by and see me. And then you went by to see coach Dooley, but I predicted that game for you. And you said it wasn't going to happen. And all the fans from Georgia are going to get on me about it, but I told oh, yeah. you that we were going to get drilled that day. So tell them. Yeah. I flew over with a couple of my, my wealthy friends uh, and uh, because they're wealthy. I, 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 I drive the games. I don't, you know, fly private planes, but it's always good to have a couple of friends. And uh, we went by Coach Don. And, Coach, I mean, I, I never watched a game with Coach. I mean, there was, it was a big game. It was a big game. There was, I think Tennessee was playing Auburn that day or somebody. But Alabama was in Georgia that, that, that night. Uh, Georgia was number one or two. And he said, uh, he said, this is not going to, it's just, it's not going to happen. And, and, and so the, the, only, the, the only thing I didn't factor in was uh, I'd also been invited to, uh, to Coach Dooley's house. And uh, I asked, I said, I got to get to Coach Dewey's house. And Coach looked at me like, well, yeah, it's only it's a couple of blocks away. But I think he eventually took me. Um, and uh, that night uh, we were texting back and forth and calling back and forth. And I said, can you believe it? He said, don't you remember? Uh, I told you about this. And that, by the way, one other thing, uh, Co Coach has done this to me a couple of times. He, I was on college game day my first year at the SEC Network because the SEC had not started yet. Uh, and I was in Clemson and he uh, texted me that morning and said, you need to go on and say that Florida state is just going to destroy Clemson that night. And I did. And, and I, of course, everybody laughed at me. Herb street said I was, I didn't know what I was talking about. Desmond Howard made faces and Pollock scoffed and, uh, Chris Fowler shook his head. And I, I think it was like a 50 point blowout that night. So if I, if I would only listen to coach every time he gives me a suggestion, I, I probably would uh, be a lot smarter than I appear to be, but, but he knows football, I, but not that I'm telling the audience anything they don't already know. Yeah. I've had a lot of bad picks too, but the one thing that you do, Paul, which I'll give you credit for you at least uh, reflect on what I say when I try to help you sometimes. And that's good. I mean, uh, you know, one thing about it being around it as much as I have, you can get a feel for it, but we just want to tell you how much this means to our fans to get an interpersonal type deal with you today. I know you got plenty of things and uh, from me and, and from Dane, we really appreciate you sharing your thoughts on uh, Georgia and everything else. And, and I'm sure that hopefully I'll be on your show here soon and that maybe I can pay you back. I hope so. No, the pleasure was mine. I had a blast. Coach Dane, thank you so much for inviting me. And I hope, I hope Georgia fans realize, uh, and we're not only talking about a Hall of Fame coach here in Jim Donovan, but somebody who is respected and beloved in the industry. Uh, thank you, Coach. It's always a pleasure.